This is episode 76 of Our Modern Heritage, the Home and Family Culture Podcast, and I'm your host, Jody Chafee. Family culture is the collective vision, values, traditions, habits, and norms that create your family identity and mission. All families have a culture, whether by default or by design. The mission of this show is to help you discover and design your family culture more intentionally by offering insights and tools from experts, authors, and influencers who are lending services to families or have been influenced by their own family culture in the course throughout the course of their own success. As I explore the different possibilities of family culture, I'll be posting updates and interacting with you on my site at homeandfamilyculture.com and on Instagram at Family Culture Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. My episode today will be with uh, a feng shui specialist, Laura Staley, and I'm so excited for you to experience this discussion because I learned so much about how we can shape our environment to uh, optimize our family culture to create a thriving environment for our families. So today on the podcast, we have Laura Staley, and Laura is the founder of Cherish Your World, and she helps people thrive in in their physical spaces where they live and work. She educates people about the optimal arrangement of belongings for comfort, safety, and flow, decluttering for freedom, and planning transitions to new or updated spaces for optimal joy in life. Laura knows that the conditions of our homes and workplaces shape the quality of our lives. And I, I'm so excited to talk with you about this because I recently did an episode about like, you know, because the, the Connery is really popular in media and she's, you know, all these different things. And I was like, there are so many other ways to address your space and your things that, that this is not just the only way. Um, so I'm excited to talk with you. And Laura is also, she also published a book called Let Go Courageously and Live with Love, Transform Your Life with Feng Shui and Cherish Your World gift book, 100 Tips to Enhance Your Home and Your Life. So wonderful. So grateful to have you on the episode today, Laura. Oh, thank you so much, Jody, for having me. It's such an opportunity to get to share I, my passion, my vision, um, and these ideas to really serve people and uplift them and, you know, have us laugh a little bit too. We were talking a little bit about, you know, our my, my conceptions about what feng shui is and that, you know, I'd heard a little bit about it growing up and, um, and so it was just like, it's great to be able to talk with you and what you, you know, so you can educate me and my audience about what feng shui is and why it's so important to, you know, address our spaces and, and the feelings that it can generate in our, in our homes and our families and, um, and just the energy inside of ourselves and how it impacts us. I think that that's really important to our family culture because, you know, like for myself personally, my energy is definitely um, tied to my environment a lot. You know, there's definitely a lot going on there with me that uh, if, if my home gets cluttered or, or it's just doesn't flow very well, then I get really anxious and uptight. And <laughs> I know that that translates out to the way oh, that I absolutely. treat my family. And oh, absolutely. Right. So I'm excited to talk with you. Oh yeah. Well, and that, and that's a, that's a perfect il- illustration. I mean, most people intuitively know that sp- unless it, they're just really disconnected and they're, I don't think there are that many people that are that disconnected, but um, I mean, uh, my simple definition of feng shui is it's an art and practice of arranging your space to enhance the quality of your life. Another take at it, which I think is really valuable. It's really alignment and transformation of your inner space with your outer space. And it's dynamic, right? Because our, our lives are evolving. You and I aren't children any longer. And yet here you are having a passion for the the lives of families and moms and dads and children and their interaction and space absolutely is either supporting you and inspiring you in your in the quality of your life, or or it or it's not, or you're you're finding your way to that what I like to call the sweet spot, or even that messy middle of it's not perfection on the one end and it's not the hoarder house on the other end. 
right? Where you're in that messy middle, especially as a family where you have, you know, flow and papers coming in from children and artwork or, or whatever creative pursuits your children are engaged in. And the parents who want to hold on to things that their children have created and the children aren't all that attached. They just love the process, for, for instance, right? And you're exactly right. And, and, I, and I've identified, for instance, um, three ways uh, people relate to space in terms of organizing. So I've called, it's in my book, but there's the Aspire, the mind, mel- mind Melder, and the Hidden Treasure Seeker. Will you so say that, those three again, please? Sure, there's the Mind Melder. And the Mind Melder basically no, needs to clear the desk at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. It's the person who needs to clear the kitchen at the end of the day and have everything put away. But they're also the person that, it's often mom, but not necessarily. But mom, where's my blah, blah, blah? And you're like, it's the third drawer down on the right-hand side. And sure enough, <laughs> a child opens the drawer and they find exactly what they were looking for, right? That's your mind melter. Mind melters get, they get agitated by the eye spires <laughs> mm. <laughs> sometimes. Well, yeah, usually. <laughs> so your, <laughs> your eye spire personality, if you will, is the person that actually is inspired by the, and cued by the things being out in the open, So if they're working on a project, say you've got a child who's working on a Lego creation, for instance, I'll just use that as an example. They really want all the pieces and all the parts of that Lego creation to be out in the space. And yet you could have somebody walk in and go, ah, clutter, ah, I don't want to step on a Lego, right? And, and, And yet the child isn't inspired to work on it the next day and the next day and the next day. And is there a way, is there a way to then flow and find that you know that that again that sweet spot of honoring that the child actually is cued visually the eye spire they need to see it right or even even, or well the funny one that I also talk about is your mind melder the eye spire will have gotten out of glass and be walking over to the refrigerator to fill the glass with juice or beverage, right? Because they need the glass, right? And the mind melder will have gone over, washed it, and put it back in the cabinet. (laughs) 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 Right? And the ice fire is like walking back going, oh, where's my glass that I just wanted to pour my Uh juice or beverage, right? So that, yeah, it's it's an interesting dance. And what's helpful to know that about members of your family, and you could, and, and people could even sit around and ask one another, gosh, what inspires you? Do you like things being out in view? And for instance, kitchens are often a combo pack, right? There, where we literally have things out on the counter, visually reminding us, oh, there's a bowl of oranges. So let's eat healthy today. <laughs> or there's, um, I don't know, a vase of flowers that just really make your heart sing. And the mind melder even enjoys the vase of flowers. So it's not like my, it, like it's a pure thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because most of us are co- combination. And then there are the hidden treasure seekers. <laughs> hidden treasure seekers, they actually love the hunt. <laughs> they <laughs> love to dig through the glove compartment and find the $20 bill. It's so fun for them. <laughs> right. They're uh-huh. almost like the, I don't mean this unkind, but like the dogs who bury the bone and then they go, <laughs> they go pick up the bone again. Uh-huh. Right. And they, they, they find it a joyful experience. So they'll stash a box, they'll put something, something, somewhere, they'll, they'll know what's in there, but then they'll have this joyful experience of opening the cabinet, you know, taking down the box and digging through it and going, yes, I knew my blah, blah, blah was in here, right? So those are your hidden treasure seekers. And usually most of us are some combination of the two, but everybody has their threshold or their bandwidth of what they can manage. Kind of like you were saying, you, you're like, okay, if my space gets you know, this much more clutter. Whoa, I'm agitated and I'm I'm unkind to my family. Well, what is that threshold? And what's that threshold for your child? 
because they ha- they may have a huge bandwidth, like, right? Because they're just creative and they're just like, oh, the stuff and, you know, it's fun. And as long as I have, well, and they may have more of the I spider in them. Yeah. So the things are inspiring them to interact and be alive and be playful. Whereas to calm down the nervous system, the mind melder needs everything, most things put away at the end of the day, right? right? To feel peaceful and then to find the flow, find the flow with and then ask members of your family but but you're absolutely right it's a it's an outside inside knowing yourself and being able to identify what really supports you about your belongings and the space Wow. I, you know, you're describing those three and I'm just, I'm kind of laughing to myself going, we have all three of those in my family. I just know it. And because like my husband and I, especially my husband, he's definitely the mind melder. He'll like go through it, put everything away. And, um, and, but I'm a mind melder in that I'm like, I can't stand everything out, you know? And, but my son, the Lego example is perfect because he's my, my eight year old son and he will not put them away. He has to have them out all the time but he'll play with them all day long but so it's good for me to understand that that's what's going on with him is that well he just it inspires him if it if it's out it's there it's inspiring and 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 it keeps him going with the creative process that he has going on in his head because he does all day long he's creating and and he's building and he's really excited about these new things he's inventing all the time and and so I just knowing that about him, it's like, well, I just need to like honor that for him and figure out where our boundaries are. Like you said, Um, and then, yeah, go ahead. You can, like in that example, you can make sure that it's in in a contained space. Like maybe it's not in a shared space. If you're, if your home allows for that, yeah. know some homes it's it's challenging but if your son has his own own bedroom and it's really okay for him to keep those legos out in a corner of yeah. his room and it doesn't it doesn't keep him up at night except right. get out of bed and jump over and play with the legos because that because that's the other thing i have found in working with parents and in, in parenting my own two children who are adults now is sometimes in bedrooms especially that you want to calm down that space at bedtime and I know uh, creating rituals where you're actually putting things to bed can be really helpful, especially for a young child who might be struggling with sleep. So yes, you can have that eye spire, but if you find that your child is um, overstimulated, because a lot of children's bedrooms can be way too, like, like I always ask parents, could you sleep in this room, <laughs> right? And not to be, not to be unkind, right. but kind of like, whoa, right. I probably couldn't because it's, it's, there's too many colors, there's too many belongings. And, yeah. and if there isn't a, a play space outside of the child's bedroom, you know, can those, those items be restored and there be a fun, playful ritual to put them in treasure boxes, to put them in containers, to do kind of the mind melder, which your husband does, of, of putting them away at night and singing good night to them. I mean, obviously, if you've got a teenager, they're not going to do that. <laughs> well, maybe they would. Maybe they get the car and, you know, invent a song. I don't know. But you get, you get what I'm, I'm saying and, and putting all those things to sleep so they know they can interact with they'll be there for them in the morning, but uh, it helps to calm down the room and the space so that they can get a, a good night's sleep. And, and a, a bedrooms, that's often a, a, a challenge because they're multi, often multi-purpose spaces for children. They're not just designated, this is your, your sacred space for sleep. And if there's a complaint that I hear from a lot of parents, oh my God, my kids don't sleep through the night, or, or maybe the parents are struggling to sleep through the night. Mm-hmm. Well, look at what's going on in the bedroom, in your own bedroom. Is there clutter? Is there the workout equipment and the stack of bills that you walk in and you're like, okay, is, the, is it time to work out? Is it time to sleep? Or is it time to pay my bills? <laughs> right? And there's yeah. confusion. Right. And, and is it possible if you can't move the workout equipment, it's the only place, can you put it, can you put a cloth over it? Same way in a child's bedroom. Can you just calm down? Can you get a drape, a cloth if you don't have the cabinets and, and such, or if the child really is that aspire and just would love to, 
you know, whip off the, the cloth in the morning and then ha- have at their projects and the things that inspire them. But there can be these simple solutions mm-hmm. to those, the finding that sweet spot of, of inspiration play and then the flow, right? Because that's a lot about feng shui too. We flow, we're not, there's times to sleep, there's times to play, there's times to work, there's time to be focused, there's time to be quiet, there's time to be active and playful. And bedrooms and dining rooms in families can be multi-purpose spaces, but can you change them up pretty quickly to match the intention of what's happening at that moment. So for instance, in the dining room, it may be the place where your kids do their homework, but can you calm it down at mealtime and have a place that your children take their homework and stick it on a shelf and then have it a, a, a bonding place for everybody to join and laugh and talk about their day and interact and really enjoy their food and, and digest that food in calm and, and, and peacefulness. And every family gets to find that, again, that sweet spot. You know, some families may just need complete, like, whoa, everything's got to be put away, kind of a more of a mind melder thing to feel calm and connected and look in each other's eyes and smile and laugh and, oh, that's who you are, <laughs> right? Get, you know, put away the screens, you know, shut the computers, put them, you know, move them out of the space and, and just be with one another. You know, we have these languages of love that Gary Chapman talks about. And I think this is so important in a family, you know, touch, talk, you know, words of appreciation, um, quality Quality time, time, right? And presence, you know, if there's one thing that, you know, with all the screams and all the distractions we have going on in our lives now to be able to simplify. And that's actually one of the the things that I love about feng shui is it it actually is about simplifying our lives to get down to the essentials of what's in your heart. What do you value the most about being part of a family? What, what does it mean to connect to your child and really love them and have them feel your love? So they, they know that they matter. They know that they're um, appreciated. They, they know that, they have a sense of, oh, yeah, that's stepping over a boundary, but I'm not going to get cruelly um, abused. Right. <laughs> right? But, I, but I know that there are boundaries here that there, uh, and, I, and I get to respect the relationship and figure out what's going on with me developmentally and help the adult, have the adults in my life have that uh, awareness and understanding so that they can help me become the best person that I can possibly be and for parents to continue their journey of, of, of self-awareness, self-discovery to become the best, healthiest parents that they, that they can be. And sometimes it's dismantling the past. You know, I hear from people, they come from the hoarder house and they really don't want to be the hoarder house for their kids because they, they saw the, the impact. They feel the impact. And they really aren't interested in recreating that. They really want to break free. Right. So, so basically what, what I hear you saying is like when there's a time and a place for these things, these patterns, these rhythms in our lives, that the, the best way to honor those things is to not necessarily have them really overlap very much. So like when it's time for sleep, you want to say, okay, it's time to put the toys to bed. Or when it's time to eat and spend that quality time together, okay, it's time to put our homework away and our screens away. And that that allows for the, that quality of interaction or quality of, of what, you're, what needs to be done at that time to, to really emerge and, and be able to honor that time to, to get the rest or to get the quality time together. Uh, or whichever, you know, if it's play, if it's work, you know, like if it's work, then it's say, like, okay, get your work out and this is your time to work. And then it's like, okay, now it's time for meal. So put your work away. <laughs> and so that allows you that space to really, to really honor what needs to be done in that time. So that, you know, I mean, you hear all these studies about how multitasking doesn't work anyways. Yeah. And so it's really important to, to like honor 
that space. And I really do appreciate your tip about putting the toys to bed because like for my son, he really loathes when we put his things away and he does not want them put away. But the idea of even just putting like a blanket over it and saying, let's just put it to bed so that it's not a distraction. And, you know, a lot of times, a lot of parents do struggle with bedtimes. And yes. so to say, well, yeah, look at your space and see, is it honoring you, the child's need to sleep? Yeah. Or is it a distraction? Yeah. Again, getting clear on those boundaries of saying, this is playtime and this is bedtime. Let's really define that boundary. Um, yeah. So that's, that's really good tips. Right. Well, and those times of transition can be really difficult because, again, depending yeah. on the personality of the child or, or even the adult, right, you can have a clash where some people are like, oh, time to go. And they're out the door and then kids are like, <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> well, and I, yeah. honestly, you know, I'll, I'll tell them myself, I, I had this thought that I had to like have this immaculate, put, you know, everything put away. Anytime we transitioned out the door and I was making my kids crazy because I, I was so full of stress. It's like, oh, God, we got to restore order, restore order, you know, like, Ugh. right. And, and I kind of softened. OK, some of the things can be put away, but do they have to be all put away uh, and, and then make this this transition time so agitating? So can family, depending on you know, their own sense of things and their sense of their children, because I totally honor where people are. That's why I listen and ask lots of questions of my clients mm -hmm. is to create some kind of gentle, playful, meaningful rituals for transition. And it, it, Cause it just, it helps. It, it just yeah. use, you know, kind of cues the body. And then it's like, Oh, right you know, we brush teeth, we're going to read a story and, and, and kids really love, especially young children, they love that structure and rhythm. And if it's fairly consistent, it can be so helpful because that it's like structure allows for freedom. So the structure and the ritual of the transition can be so supportive. And yeah, you're, you're constantly interacting with the belongings, right? As you go through yeah. those transitions, adults are looking for their car keys, right? Hopefully they've kept them in a place that they can find them. You know, there's the funny story of me, you know, the one... <laughs> One time, and I know people do this on a regular basis, so it's like stressful, right? Uh -huh. But I had my kid, my you know, safety patrol. They had to get off to safety patrol, and we're, we're turning the whole house upside down. And I laughed so hard because the keys were in the door of the garage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> but it's like, oh, okay, a place for everything and everything, and it's right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. No, so that's a really. That's so important about the transition. So like, like I know, I see it all the time when, when it's like time to leave the park time, yeah. you know, and the kids screaming, throwing a fit or, you know, <laughs> but, but, you know, we do that little jingle that's like from the Daniel tiger, like it's almost time to stop. So choose one more thing to do, you know? And, and so it's like those little things that give them the cues of saying, this is, it's this, here's a transition coming up or will, you know, if they're doing something watching, especially with electronics, like oh I, I'm not a fan, but like, if you have to, you know, you're using electronics and it's time to stop, like give them warning. Don't just kill, go like jump in on them. Like, it's time to turn it off. And, you know, like you see that their show's almost over and say, after this show, it's time to turn it off or something, you know, or, you know, just give them a warning or even before they start, say, you guys can pick two shows, you know, and that's it. You know, stuff like that. And like setting a timer so that they can see those things because oh. I, it just breaks my heart when my kids throw a fit and I'm like, I know, but I did try to warn you that we were going to turn them off. <laughs> right, right. And, well, and then sometimes the, the meltdowns, they just happen. And then yeah. they, they centered in ourselves as parents and, you know, gently, you know, gather your children up and take them to a place of safety. And yeah, but, um, yeah, oh my gosh, I love the timer. Why I love the timer is it's not personal because then it's not you in a struggle with your child. It's really about the timer. So bing, the timer goes off. And, and even, even adults are supported by that. Like I, I often, people have clutter, right? Adults, children, that whole thing. And if they really have belongings that they don't need, or love or that serve them any longer. I, I encourage 10 minutes a day, open that drawer and put on a timer 
because that, that, that can be so supportive for both adults and, and children. And then everybody can join in the fun. Kind of like, can you find five things in your room that you don't play with any longer? And maybe there was this natural disaster that we've had so many, right? Yeah. If you've got older children who have an awareness of that, it's a, it's a moment of compassion, right? Where they can go, oh, yeah, I don't play with this. And, you know, this family's just lost everything. Right. Or it, and so that they can they can be in that flow of, of letting letting things go that they no longer they no longer need use or love. And then as adults to to model that. But I, but I love the timer. I love the timer for transitions. I love the timer for clearing clutter. I mean, timers just they, they help. Since you brought up decluttering, I, I feel like that's a really strong um emotional stressor oh. in a lot of ways, you know, and, um, but it's something that I just think, so this needs to happen, right? People really do need to go through and declutter periodically, maybe yes. even regularly. Um, so what are some more of your tips or ideas about how to go through your things to evaluate, you know, what you don't, doesn't serve you and what you can get rid of? That's a, such a great question. Well, first of all, know that I come with a lot of compassion. So I know it's emotional, first of all. And it isn't as simple as, you know, um, joy. You know, it's not bifurcated. A lot, a lot of times there's this messy place of ambivalence about things. Mm-hmm. Well, I might need it someday. Well, then that's about trust. Can you trust that that very thing that you're going to let go would flow back in your life or you could borrow it from a neighbor Right. Or it would flow into your life or you could go to the store 10 years from now with the resources to purchase it. So a lot of decluttering is ultimately about trust, trust the flow, trust the flow of life. Um, I think it's really important to honor children. And I I know when they're super young, obviously keep the space safe. Actually, safety for adults is, is really important. Uh, but honor their process. So I have the example of my own son where, you know, I call it donate keep. And as they were approaching a birthday, I, I would just gently say, Hey, you know, it's, let's schedule a time for donate keep. And they knew what that meant. Mm -hmm. They got to open drawers and, you know, look at things and say, what, what are you going to let go that you just don't play with anymore? And what do you want to keep? And they got to choose. And I so remember sitting with my son who was about four years old. And I, as a parent, saw this object that I thought, oh, my gosh, he hasn't played that with that in a year. Like, if it were me, I'd grab that thing and have it in the bag. <laughs> in that yeah. minute. And he didn't choose it. Mm-hmm. And I just allowed him his own process. And what was so fascinating, Jody, is um, probably about two weeks later, because I gave him the full permission to choose, and he chose some things. He just he was like, "Oh yeah, I don't play with this, mommy, and I don't play with this." And but about two weeks later, that very item that I had identified that he didn't play with, he got it himself. But he had to go through his own internal process. Right. Get it. And he toddled down the hall and he's like, here, mommy, you can put this in the donate bag. Wow. And then he also had something that he let go of. And a year later on his birthday, he got the exact same toy. Oh, <laughs> and wow. he played with it like it was like brand new, like he had never had one before. <laughs> so it was great. Right. Wow. And yeah. I really believe that that is real and true. Uh, and, and, mostly adults must model this for for our children we must make get clear our own relationship with belongings and as we model that and and say you know gosh there's been this hard thing and mommy doesn't wear you know as they're gathered around you you know mommy doesn't wear this anymore and i'm gonna donate it to women who don't have many much clothing or, or whatever. I'm going to give it to a friend who really has loved the sweater and I never wear it. Or you've got that brand new item that's got the price tags on it and you've just never worn it, right? I, yep. I discovered one of those. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I've been practicing all this time. And like, you know, it's, it's, it's an ongoing journey for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, to, to, to model it ourselves 
and really ask those deep questions. Do I love it? Do I need it? What's the story behind this? If you're ambivalent, can you revisit it in six months and get clear? Because some items are associated with a loved one who passed. Mm -hmm. I hear that a lot, right? And they feel like, oh God, Uncle Zach, you know, died. And I, he said, you know, for me to keep this desk, but the desk is buried. It's in the garage. It's buried under more clutter. And they're not honoring that relationship by using the desk because they actually don't want the desk. Can right. it go to a family member? Can you grieve? See, a lot of times with belongings, you just have to do the internal work to grieve, the, 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 to do the final process. Maybe the person's passed and you've been doing that grieving, but now there are these belongings that are connected to that person. Uh, can you get engaged that process? And, it, and it's, a, it's a powerful and meaningful process, but that's where a guide like myself can sit with you and allow you to tell the whole story, do the show and tell. I mean, it's amazing how often adults are literally needing the show and tell. They want to know that somebody else will appreciate the meaning of this belonging. And the beautiful transformations that take place when people let go, it's really astonishing. There was a woman who wasn't going to have a child, and she had the whole room set up um, for the new baby. And she and her son found a woman who was pregnant, who they were able to take the things to. And it was tearful and meaningful and all the gratitude. But she, for her healing process, and then they transformed that room into an office for her husband, mm -hmm. right? And it's just stories like that that are, that are meaningful and emotional and, and just really profound and powerful. So know that it's a, deep, it's a deeper process. And you, and you must be able for, I mean, some things you're like, oh, oh my God, why was I keeping this? And you yeah. laugh. You know, and some things we just get to lighten up and laugh about. But the other things, you know, it's like laughing and crying. And when I've worked with people, it's very much that process. And holding space and compassion for ourselves, for all of it, everything in between. And the things that you're ambivalent about, hold on to them. I would never dishonor a person by saying you must let go of something that they're not ready to go let go of. And don't dishonor your kids by forcing them to let go of something that, in your opinion, they don't play with anymore. It's a child's process, honor them because down the road, they'll remember that you honored their choice because you wouldn't want anybody, right? Stepping into your house and ripping things out of your hands, right? Yeah. Saying yeah. you don't need this anymore. Well, who is anyone else to say that about yeah. your belonging? Because yeah. maybe it came from your great grandpa and you love your great grandpa. And you're going to, you know, it's the woman with the hanky. To you and I, it might be a piece of white cloth. But to her, it's, it was her dad that passed. Mm. It was his hanky. She'll keep that white cloth for a lifetime, right? Yeah. yeah. And she's allowed oh, to. Absolutely. Right? You know, so whether it's a piece of jewelry or, or, or um, uh, um, you know... <laughs> a seashell, <laughs> uh, whatever that item is, if it means something, you get to hold on to it. But if it doesn't, clear it away. And, and even more important, what are the life experiences that you want to have? What is your soul and heart yearning for? That in the clearing of the breathing room space of those belongings being out and off your property, what will you do with your kids? Where will you go? What experiences of touch, time, words of appreciation, laughter, right? These are those intangibles that, you know, because when I have a whole blog on this, but, you know, when people pass, they don't, you know, there's not the U-Haul. People rarely stand up and say, oh, you know, they had a house full of stuff and it was really cool stuff. No, they're talking about, oh, we laughed and the person yeah. sang songs to me and they held me. And, you know, the memories of what what really got created in that in that time together is what lingers. And they and we actually now know, and I love this, I love when science, you know, meets meets ancient wisdom, right? Uh -huh. um, of backing that up of saying, the happiness that endures is not with the stuff, but it's kind of like, you know, so what, what, what really fulfills your heart? 
And it often isn't another shopping experience. It might be, but that's brief and fleeting. Yeah, it's and temporary. What's more meaningful, especially with a family and with children, is the interaction. They're going to remember the joke she told or the dumb joke she told or the experience, that, the rituals that you did, right? The funny times that you had together. They're not going to remember what you gave them two Christmases ago, unless it was like super like, whoa. Like I remember the roller skates that I got. And I remember the books that I got, but everything else, I sort of don't, you know, yeah. I, what endures over time in our memories is experiences. Yeah. So for people to keep that in mind and in balance, and I'm not saying, oh, become a minimalist or anything like that. You've got to ask these questions of yourself um, as, as, as parents and, and as you interact with children in your, in your family life. Yeah. What, no, what do you really, you know, like, what do you really value? What you yeah. like, no yeah. kidding. and then have your actions uh, demonstrate that you value your kids, that you value that experience of being with them, yeah. undistracted, fully present, fully with your heart, available to listen, to hear the good, the bad, the hard, the tears, to hold them on your lap, the hug. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's not there. Um, Sorry, I get moved by this, but, you know, I was so blessed to be with my kids and they're adults now. And it's like, wow, that went so fast. And to savor those moments, because we we do have a rich um, body of stories, mm-hmm. of experiences that we had together. And now we're creating them as adults. Know that you're in for the long haul. Like it's about that adult child you know adult children Mm -hmm. relationship I'm still a mom and I get to have those deep meaningful connections with my adult children because of the time and experiences and the seed planting and the listening and the presence as best I could and gosh I made tons of mistakes so it wasn't about that it was like (laughs) as much as I could you know to have it be less about the stuff and my son loved Legos. My daughter loved Polly Pockets, <laughs> right? And all the, right? I, I remember what my kids loved. Yeah. But oh my gosh, when I sat down and did quality time, we did special time switch off. That was so meaningful. I know they remember that to this day. So they got to be with their dad and do something that they said. It wasn't screen time. We always put limits. And then now special time looks like, you know, on the phone, FaceTime. We're taking special time just with them one-on-one. Yeah, one-on-one. Yeah. And it's especially great when a baby comes into the mix, right? So they don't feel like, oh my gosh, I, well, they, they do have to share mom and dad. (laughs) <laughs> right or, or mom and mom or dad and dad I don't have <laughs> um, but um, you know whoever the parents caregivers it could be it could be a blended family there's all yeah. different kinds of expression of family and I, I actually yeah but um, you know that time with a child is that one-on-one even if it's 10 minutes and you schedule it on the calendar and they look forward to it and that you so super honor it as an adult, adult, like Sunday at three o'clock. And then they're like, when is special time mom and, or dad or, you know, grandma? And then you can go, here it is, you know, he, here's our special time. And it's not yet Sunday, but when it's Sunday, we'll have our special time. And they just like so look forward to it because they know for sure during that 10 minutes, you're going to be fully available to them. And the, to see your child through fresh eyes, because they change so much yeah. as they grow, right? That you can just savor the, those, those moments before they're just out of the house. <laughs> like, yeah, for me now. <laughs> yeah, right. It goes fast. And I mean, my kids are still little, but I just, I'm grateful to be learning this stuff so that, you know, now, because, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just wonderful to hear your experience and, and, you know, that opportunity as younger parents that we still have to, you know, be with our kids and, and know that when they are older, if we're doing these things, we treasure these moments that we, they, it continues, that we don't have to, you know, it's not the end. It's, that, that's right. That's right. And it, and, and it may be that you're doing puzzles as adults, yeah. that there's still belongings that are part of your interaction, mm-hmm. but maybe not. Maybe you just all want to go travel and, or take a walk in the park and tell funny stories and laugh, <laughs> right? Or, it, yeah. I mean, just like thousands of extra expressions, but yeah, it's kind of like, yeah. 
that seed planting for the kind of relationship you actually want to have as, as adults. And some of us have to break cycles and break patterns from our past, right? With the things yeah. and with our emotional world. And that's really profound and powerful work. And some people need support. I know I did. So uh, you you did you brought that up before too this idea of our our like baggage and things that we bring in to our families and you know how it's like one family might have grown up with a group clutter and you know messy house and then they grow up and think well I don't want to mess I want to and so they they end up like wanting to purge everything all the time but right. then that creates new baggage for their children right. <laughs> um, or parents who cut, who are kids that grew up with their parents who didn't, who were opposite of hoarder, you know, like I wanted everything to be immaculate right. and then they weren't allowed to touch anything or be free, you know? So it's just like, I can, I can see that. So, so what are some of the ways that, you know, we can address our person, you know, it's so important as parents, because you said also that we need to model for our children, you know, the types of behaviors that um, will, will honor what we need and what they need and things. So, so how do we do that? How, what are some more tips or ideas? Right. Well, for sure in doing your own work, get, we're super clear what the needs are emotionally, socially um, for a child as they're developing. So a three-year-old can't do what a eight-year-old can do. And mm-hmm. a can't do what a three-year-old can do. Right. And then, because sometimes that, and then identify those places and spaces in your own journey that were hurtful and painful so that you can regain a sense of the, whatever you think was lost. Mm-hmm. So if you didn't have freedom to create, can you create that for yourself with your kids? and parent them from that greater wholeness. So for, so in other words, whatever was taken, whether it was, um, you know, abandonment or th- these, these I just read were, are like the universal human fears, abandonment, separation, who hasn't experienced something like that. Um, low worth, unworthiness, a feeling that you weren't, you didn't matter or uh, lack of trust. So betrayal, right? And these all show up in space. You know, I know in my own case, for instance, I had toys ripped from my hands and I never, I still don't know why, <laughs> right? And thrown in the trash. And, you know, <laughs> so I, so in that moment, right, with my son where he's opening his drawer, I had to pause, right? And not just grab one of those toys and throw it in the d- donation bag because I knew how, as a child, how painful that was for me. So to um, be aware, pay attention, maybe get support if you know you're on the extremes. Like if you know you came from this pristine household that was really, really tough and you want to find your messy middle, because I think it's all about coming into the messy middle or you know that you kind of lived in this really crazy order sort of environment and and you you notice that you want to go way over to the other extreme that you find you 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 get that sweet spot in in the in the middle ground um so education is a really important and then coming to terms with your relationship with your things so if you're still holding on and you got five storage lockers i know i'm <laughs> i'm exaggerating but it's time as a grown up to open up those storage lockers and let her go, mm-hmm. let her go. And, and sometimes it's just grieving the past, gr- grieving out those, those hurts and the loss, maybe getting support if you need that. Um, I, I, do, I don't think there's, well, no, there's always something more to learn about ourselves so that as we become whole and see that we're worthy, that we don't have to recreate abandonment from ourselves mm-hmm. or from our faith if we have faith and then we then we won't recreate those patterns with our kids with the things and with our emotional world we can just really come to terms with bringing back a sense of trust of ourselves right yeah in those healthy relationships with other moms and dads because everybody's trying to figure it out it's the yeah. hardest it is the hardest job i've ever done and it's the most meaningful work that I've ever done in my life. I mean, I love Cherish Your World and I love writing, but getting to parent my kids from a really healthy place or as healthy as I could possibly be 
still means the world to me. And I continue in, to evolve and develop my skills uh, in communication and listening. So listening yeah. is super important. You know, what brings you peace? So if you, as a parent, if you've got a messy bedroom and you're agitated all the time, what can you do today to soften yourself into that heart space? Is there one thing that you can take out of your bedroom that has been annoying the crap out of you, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> and just let it go. Yeah. So that you can start to feel peaceful today. Mm, yeah. Get that good night's sleep that every parent deserves. You, you de- Parents deserve a good night's sleep, let alone mm-hmm. children, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, those are just kind of some ideas. I'm, I'm sure, yeah. but I hope you got a sense that it, it really is kind of like this inner work, heart work. And it's the outer work of, you know, our relationship to others. You know, are you connected? Are you isolated? I know, Mm -hmm. I know I raised my kids at a time when, you know, parents all went out to, to work. It was like, oh, you know, three me, three weeks. And I'm, you know, I'm exaggerating, but right. And then I, I, I chose, I just was one of those people. I'm the rebel renegade, whatever. But I just, I knew I wanted to be a full-time mom. And like I said, it was the hardest work I could ever do. It was emotional. I made lots of, lots of mistakes. I, I, I needed to break patterns, huge patterns that were really toxic and so it was just it was just meaningful work so I have compassion for for yeah in in for children and for families just because of what what I've lived what I broke through um so I felt isolated and I and I had to work at getting getting myself connected to other um, parents, because I know dads are staying home. That we now yep. are things are changing rapidly, uh, and and it's no longer this. Well, okay, there's still places to, to go with that, but uh, at any rate, don't you know to isolate yourself isn't good. Yeah, you know, community, be you know, reach out for that that support and the kindness, and then even have parties where you're letting things go. You know, like come over to my house, and I'm going to purge my kitchen of all the. <laughs> Uh, you know, thousands of people, pieces of Tupperware that I don't use anymore, you know, and, and, and and make it fun and a potluck and, you know, and then the kids can be part of it and they're opening the cabinets and going, mom, do you need this? And you're like, no, I don't even know what that is. (laughs) Right. So you can do in community and not have the shame or embarrassment around because everybody's got stuff. We're back to the butter. Well, we all have, I think we, everybody has emotional baggage and then you have baggage and man when you started that process of the and it's courage it's a walk of courage that's why yes. I titled the book let go courageously because I know it takes courage to, to to engage this work in a mindful and meaningful way I love that <laughs> yeah it's so I mean because we all have like our baggage we all have well and I think that that like you said, to pay attention, because I think a lot of times we get triggered by things that are like, wait, I'm not really necessarily being triggered by my child or this stuff that they're doing or whatever. It's from whatever is my baggage that's going on. And so to to be aware that to bring yourself back to, okay, I'm not going to let this out on my child when it's inside of me. It's my own baggage that's really triggering this. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, and, that, and honestly, that's the work uh, uh, that I got to do. I mean, I literally had to interrupt my own patterns and give myself timeouts and scream and yell into the pillow so that I wasn't hurting my kids. Yeah, I, it's like parenting ourselves in a way. <laughs> yeah, it is. It very much is. Now, I, I chose the path of, of having support because I personally knew I needed I needed that. And, and, and some people can do it, you know, with books or I, I chose everything because <laughs> I just I, I knew I intuitively knew even before I became a mom that I, I had that deeper work work to do and they would be crying at the door you know but I, cl- I closed the door I just said mommy has to take a time out yeah. and I went in and ah yeah. <laughs> no because I was done terrifying my kids yeah 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 no I I, 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 can I, was not, I was not committed to that I just mm-hmm. like oh no they're tiny beings they they get to feel safe in the world and inside their bodies yeah. and terrified of their own 
mom. Yeah. 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 So one uh, other thing I wanted to ask you about that I'm curious is, is you mentioned that feng shui is all about flow and, and the way that, you know, things that just come and go. And it kind of reminded me of like, um, you know, uh, the way that people talk about like the secret or like things like that with, with the way that um, the things that we put out into the world come back to us or, or things like that. Mm-hmm. And so I'm curious about how feng shui honors that and what, what it looks like in feng shui. Uh, well, I guess the piece of feng shui is the, the letting go uh, what no longer, you no longer need, use or love and opening yourself to your deepest desires. Because, okay. okay, you might have a desire for a motorcycle, but your deeper desire may be for freedom. Mm. Right? And, and who doesn't want to live with peace, grace, and dignity in their soul, in their being, right? To be a good person is a, a, a desire, and so is living on a house on a beach, right? Yeah. And, uh, and both of those can start to blend together in the world of feng shui because it's, it really is about the inner world aligning with the outer world and evolving to your best and highest self. What's the highest and best expression of who you are, like your true self? I mean, we have all kinds of folks talking about this now, you know, I, I love listening to Oprah. It, it, I just get the chills when she s- speaks, right? Because it's just it's from her soul. She wants people to live fulfilling lives. And it's not necessarily about the stuff. It's about your purpose, your vision, why you're on the planet. Like, honestly, why are you here? And then to have the things or your space or your home, whether it's a mobile home or an apartment in New York City or um, that big house on the on the mountainside, wherever you might live in or on a boat, maybe you're on a houseboat. You know, there are just like so many choices. I know families who have gotten in an RV for an entire year. Mm-hmm. They've, gone, they've gone, you know, they homeschooled their kids and they did all the national parks, right? So, you know, what is that highest and deepest expression of who who you are in in the world and then relate to your belongings as a source of inspiration so if you want to go to italy right have the picture of italy on the wall and you know what if you never get to italy you're enjoying that beautiful print every time you walk by it and see it on the wall. Now it'll probably cue you, right? I get to call the travel agent or I get to save some money because I actually want to go there. Mm-hmm. Right. So you can use you can use feng shui to affirm your future. So mm-hmm. when I um so when um so that I'm thinking of the person that I worked with who saw that when he cleared out his home office, he could have a a bedroom for his granddaughter to come spend the night with grandma and grandpa. You know, so that was a feng shui affirmation of a vision and a possibility that he might not have seen if he hadn't cleared away and realized that life experiences are meaningful to him. And that quality time with his granddaughter, it means the world. So getting to clear out, oh my gosh, you know, he didn't need any of those things in that office, right? Mm-hmm. So he, he saw that possibility and it's, in, it's, it's enriched his life. And to have him show me those pictures mm-hmm. of his granddaughter's bedroom and the joy. It's about transformation, Jody. Mm-hmm. The lives, the quality of people's lives shift because they've gotten clear what really matters in their hearts. Wow. That, that's, why, that, that's why I do what I do. And I, and I hear the stories every day. I cleared this away. And then, then this amazing experience flowed right into my life that I really, really wanted to have happen. But you've got to let go. Yeah, you just have to let go, let go of the past, let go of the attachment, let go of the clinging, because we're a clingy culture, you know, we'll hold on to things like, oh, like our life depends on it, and it's killing us, in a way, 
right? The hoarders are literally getting sick. Mm -hmm. right? They're physically ill because they've, they've, you know, surrounded themselves with belongings that have made them ill. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so can we free our, can we free ourselves for our highest and best and, and use our relationship with the belongings as a source of inspiration and transformation. So it's a place to start. Sometimes people don't think about it. They think, oh, transformation is I meditate and I send out to the universe. Um, I want the motorcycle, right? Mm -hmm. And then, But then their house is stuffed with things that they don't love or take care of. Right. And, and so feng shui invites you to go, okay, if you haven't taken care of the things, how is a motorcycle then just, I mean, it might, <laughs> and yay, <Yeah>. you, <laughs> right? But, but sometimes that blocks the, the flow, or if right. something's hurting your heart, or you're deflecting love, how is love going to flow into your life if you've been deflecting love all, as a pattern, right? Mm -hmm. From people, oh, you know, I want an intimate partner. I want a love relationship. And then their their home is surrounded with images of single people. Mm. Right? And, that, well, yeah. and that's, all, that's great if you want to stay single. But why not shift it up and have an image of a couple? Right. The image and the feelings that that evokes for you of being in love. And I know in my own journey, I, I did that, you know, like mm -hmm. I, I took down the print, the beautiful photograph of a woman's back and she was in a yoga meditative posture. It was gorgeous. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's not who I am anymore. Wow. Uh -huh. It was a great transition piece, but I actually knew I was worthy of a, a love relationship. So I created a a beautiful collage of, and that evoked those feelings inside of me of gratitude, of deep love, of appreciation. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know, I let go, but then I met a really great guy, <laughs> right? And then I hear the stories from clients. So it's like I'm walking the okay. talk and then I hear it from others um, of the, the transformation that takes place. When they, they, they let go of the things in the space that are grounding the past. Mm -hmm. And they um, affirm the future that they actually want to have. Uh -huh. And then why not have a great feeling about that future, even if it doesn't yeah. come fast? But a lot of times it does. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Many times it does. Uh -huh. Laura, I love this so much. This is. Oh my God, I know. I know. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I want to go through my whole house and be like, okay, this isn't, nope, this is from the past. Let's get stuff from the future we want, really. <laughs> and that makes so much sense. Like, it makes sense to just be like, why, why am I holding to stuff that doesn't, it, because when I say, hold, like, let go of things that don't serve you, I'm like, okay, but what does that really mean? You know, and so, but this, this definition of like understanding, like, this is something that's grounding me to the past. No, I want it to be something that's helping me and can, propelling me into a future that I, that, that is inspiring and, and right. Dreamy. Right. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Well, and the more things that you create, cause I, I, I have a lot of people that, you know, maybe they don't have the resources to run out to the store and buy, buy things, but I'm like, okay, create it. Those are the most affirming because, for instance, I, I just gathered the magazines and made and ripped out the pictures and pasted them on the collage. I know a lot of people talk about vision boards. Well, what I like to say is your whole house is a vision yeah. board. If you're familiar with vision boards, right? Mm -hmm. But yep. start to relate, you know, like that fresh perspective of walking through every space of your house and say, what is this affirming about my future? And you can treasure your past. It's not yeah. like you have to let go of the hanky, right? As right. The, that example. But can you let go of these, maybe things from your own childhood that you did? Why is this? Yeah. <laughs> right? And, and, and then affirm through something that you create with your own hands. Maybe it's a song that you sing to yourself. It doesn't even have to be a thing. And then you yeah. can come to yourself. Laura's going to the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> Jody's going on a cool trip. Or, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah, we are. <laughs> right. I think that makes it so much easier to, to let go. 
because it's like, I'm not letting, you know, to say I'm, I'm letting go of the past, but, but to say now I'm replacing it with what I want to going forward, you know, because I think a lot of times we focus so much on the letting go part that it's like, we, we, we have that fear and that anxiety and the lack of trust, but, but if we're looking at it as what am I bringing in? Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's my message too. Like I want to talk about like what I, I started this cause I'm like, I want to help families just talking about how to be more intentional, how to be more deliberate, you know, creating the things that really do serve your family. And it never occurred to me like this is about letting go of the past and the things that aren't serving you anymore, you know? And I mean, it is part of what I talk about, but you just, the way you described it with our environment, that's so, it just makes so much sense. Well, and I often ask people when I do that discovery, I'll say, what's different? I can even ask your listeners right now, like, what's different a year from now in your space and in your life? What do you want to be different? Not better, worse, different, like completely different, maybe unrecognizable, because that's what's possible. What, what, What does your family look like a year from now? How are you interacting? What fun are you having? Where are you going? What are you doing? How are you spending your time? Who are you being? Are you being a funny, loving, carefree mom? Um, It's just present, being present. (laughs) You know, I think it's... And vulnerable. I mean, this is why I love Brene Brown because it's like, Mm -hmm. it's about vulnerability and wholeheartedness. And there are hard things that people are going through. Yeah. Can you grieve and model that for your kids too? I mean, they're just in any given day, be looking for the bright spots, but also know that there's hard things too. And can we process through that, uh, those emotions? Because emotions are energy and motion. Yeah. And hold that vision. It's okay mm-hmm. to have a vision for the house on the beach and to be a really good person. You can do yeah. both. Why not? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 And I love, and I love, you know, your stand for families because, because, because it's like, how beautiful. I mean, I know when I walk around and see families that are interacting with loving kindness, I, I literally go up to them and just like, thank them. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it's just affirm that. Yeah. You know, and, and yes, our, maybe privately they have their moments, but even in those moments, Everybody can, does. <laughs> you know, hold space for your child and, you know, sit with them while they're sorting themselves out and they probably need food or a nap. I mean, my son was often that way, right? <laughs> or my daughters, he'd fall apart and I'd be like, oh, when was the last time you ate? Oh, <laughs> that happened to me just today. <laughs> I, think <you're> <laughs> I think you're hungry. <laughs> because I'm like a little crunchy. <laughs> Maybe I'm hungry. <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah. so true. And that could be a whole other, <laughs> a whole other topic. <laughs> keep going. We could keep going. Oh, Laura, this has been so wonderful. I, I think I could just keep talking to you. For <laughs> but this is just, you know, it's really brought to my attention the importance of this. This is so important. I'm, I'm so grateful to be able to share this and share your message because this is it's like wanting to um, create. Yeah. Just create what serves your family, creating your future and, you know, not being, not allowing your past to keep holding you back. And uh, that's just that, that message right there. If that's all people get out of this, then, I mean, there were so many other awesome, amazing tips and ideas. Everything that you shared was awesome. But like that idea to, to just move forward. And do that inner work. Yes. Heal, heal those places. Because then it's like, oh, you just don't sweat the small stuff when you get really clear what your vision is, why you're here, what you really value, and how you really generally want to parent. Yeah. The essence of the message that you want to leave your child with that endures for a lifetime. Yeah. That they're loved, that they matter that you're here yeah. for them, that you're present. And they're just, and it's, it's simple, and yet, you know, we can complicate it <laughs> in a second, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By our own, you know, it's our own, it's again, it comes back to like, what is our own baggage? And so that's why it's like, yeah, to do that inner work to, to create, you know, in, that, in these moments, what do we want, what am I creating? 
Yeah. So Laura, where can we find you? Let's- oh my goodness. Right. So I have two websites actually. So uh, cherishyourworld.com and also loveyourspaceloveyourlife.com. Cherish Your World is more of the feng shui. The Love Your Space, Love Your Life is more focused on the decluttering. Um, my email is laura at cherishyourworld.com. I'm on LinkedIn and Facebook, and people are welcome to connect me, connect with me on social media. I'm, I'm no longer on Twitter, but I did just open an Instagram, but I, like you said earlier, the two, two books. The one book is on Amazon. The other one they can get through my website and just come through my website. Awesome. Thank you so much, Laura. It was a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, thank, thank you so much for listening. I really enjoyed listening to Laura and talking with her about this topic. And I'm just excited to apply this in, in my family, in my life, and all the exciting ways that we can understand each other better because I have definitely have kids who like to leave things out and family members like to put everything away and, and sometimes we butt heads. And so it's good to know that and, and understand why that happens. Um, and I'm excited to be able to, you know, fill our space with things that foster our dreams and our visions for the future. So I challenge you to go home and give those things a try too. Again, thank you so much for listening. Please go onto iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a rating and a review and come and follow me on Instagram at Family Culture Podcasts. That's where I will post most frequently and and give me some feedback. Give me some insights. Give me some, um, you know, ideas about what you learned from, from this episode. I'd love to hear from you. So go please and share and, and like it on Facebook, whatever. I really just appreciate you listening and, and hope that this is something that is uplifting your life as much as it's uplifting mine and my family culture. So thank you. And again, remember that Mother Teresa says, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family.